morning, Helen, my dear. Morning, Siegfried. And a splendid morning it is, too. Good morning, everybody. We shan't keep you waiting long. Miss Mulligan. Ah. Oh, Faust, I see. Where's the rest of our sturdy staff? Oh, James has gone out to Mrs. Pumphrey's. Tricky Woo's gone crack the dog again. That's <laughs> Extraordinary dog, that, you know. His mistress spoils him almost to death. Well, somehow he manages to stay alive. Well, that's exactly what I mean. That's just what I mean, Helen. Uh, well, then. What's Tristan? I don't think he's really surfaced yet. Make him sound like some rare species of sea. Look at this. The Lawsons paint up a glass. Good heavens, wonders will never cease. What do you mean he hasn't surfaced yet? We've got a room full of waiting customers. Oh, I think he was out rather late last night at the Darby uh, Bell Ringers. Oh, party. no, not again. And I think he's still sleeping it off. Right. <laughs> Sun shining, birds are singing. Tell them to shut up. Can you do kill me? You're making quite a successful job yourself, I should have thought. Oh, come on, breakfast on the table. Nice aromatic pair of kippers. I don't want any breakfast. But you must eat breakfast, little brother. An army marches on its stomach. You're going to need something inside your stomach before all the marching you're going to have to do today. What do you mean? Well, first of all, the waiting room's bursting at seams. Then there's Mr. Sowerby's sow to be injected. You know, the bad-tempered one that you liked so much with all the rows and rows of teeth. After that, there's uh, Carlos to be stitched. Well, you're the horse, man. I'm going to see Mother. You went to see Mother yesterday. She wasn't in. What do you mean she wasn't in? She never goes out. Is she all right, Siegfried? That's precisely what I'm going to find out. Now, will you move? Let me rest in peace. In my considered opinion, you will never rest in peace. Your gloomy shade will be seen wandering pathetically around the many public houses you've haunted during your lifetime. Haunted with a dedication that makes publicans for miles around rejoice at your approach and start planning foreign holidays. I think someone slipped me a Mickey Finn. When you drink ten pints of best Yorkshire bitter, my boy, no Mickey Finn is necessary. Now, will you get out of there before I set the dogs on you? Jeremy bell ringers have struck again, little brothers on the point of death, huh? Oh, I see. Honestly, I wouldn't treat a mad dog the way he treats his liver. Darby, 85. Oh, Mrs. Ball. Hello. Yeah. Hello. How'd it go? Oh, fine. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's hey. made somebody's day. Who's? Oh, Foskin. Mrs. Pumphrey's gardener. Right. I said that in all probability, Tricky Woo was on his way to the great dog kennel in the sky. Oh, you see? Oh, Lord, no. Well, unless he eats himself to death. Ah, James! Yes? If you could manage to look in on Harry Sumner during the day, I'd be awfully grateful. Oh, yes? He's got a new young bull calf he wants us to look at. Right. And could you call in on the Bonds? The Bonds? Yes. There you are, written at this time. Yeah. Well, you can't miss it, Joe. It's a big house in the middle of an abbey. Uh, something wrong with one of the cats. She works for cats. Pardon? 
I saw her in the manner that some people worked for the Red Cross or the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. Usually the first thing she said, you'll get to the house. I work for cash. Spotty about them, takes in strays all the time. This is uh, crawling with them. Oh, I see. If I have a little understand, if I live, it would be nice. Oh, well, what's that? Well, the way people will insist on filling their houses with domestic pests. It's absolutely lunatic. Come on, dogs. Come on, you lot. Come on, boys. Go on. It's not the same side. Come on, boys. Come on. Oh, Lord, the ghost of Christmas past. Well past, by the look of it. I shall never look a glass of beer in the eye again, James. Yeah, of course you won't. At least not until the next day, sir. No, I mean it. I'm going to sign the pledge. What? I'll probably attend rallies up and down in the country advocating abstemiousness. I'll lecture on the evils of drink. With some coffee help. Oh, black, please. Right. <laughs> One stage in the evening, someone suggested breaking into the parish church and doing a grand side triple. Then the barmaid called last order, so we all made do with whiskey doubles. <laughs> I have this vague recollection of the bad conductor going over rather well. Right, would you like to get started on that little lot in there? I suppose so. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. Mulligan. I said good morning. Uh, it is, sir. It is. It is indeed. But at least spring is early this year. Yes, Been vomiting again, has he, Mr. Uh, Mulligan? What was that, sir? Vomiting? Oh, indeed he has not, sir. And that is the worrying part about it. To tell you the plain truth, he hasn't been vomiting in weeks. You brought him in because he isn't vomiting. Uh, it is... Foot, sir, you see. You see, I found him halfway down a dustbin last weekend. And when I pulled him out, he cut his foot. So I bandaged it up myself on account of me being a lifelong member of St. John's Ambulance. And I think it's gone bad, sir. How do you mean bad? Well, if you just bend down and smell it, sir, you'll see what I mean, sir. It, 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 it's smelling something shocking. I'm thinking he's got the gangrene in it. Billy? James, you know he thinks the foot's gangrenous. Yes, yes, I heard him. Well, what do you think? Well, I should do what he says and have a look at him. Uh, you wouldn't like to take a look, would you? What's the matter, Chris? You've been squeamish in your old days. No, no. Just say, so don't really feel up to gangrene this morning. Sorry, Chris, I really am. Up to my eyes this morning. Yes, thanks. It does pop a bit. Not to tell anybody's stomach. All right, sir, right. Oh, what a stink. No, no good. You'll have to excuse me, Mr. Mulligan. All right, Mr. Mulligan. Let's have a look at him. Good dog, Clancy. I'll be up. Yeah, Good dog, Clancy. Come on. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Ah, good dog again. Ah. Right. Ah, oh, there we are. Ah. Well, ha ha has it got the gangrene in it? Oh, good Lord, no. Look, he's healing very nicely. But what's that shocking smell, sir? Well, it's a sort of uh, doggy equivalent of sweaty feet, actually, Mr. Mulligan. Pardon? Sweaty feet? <laughs> <laughs>
んでいいんだよ。うん Yes. James Harris. I have Siegfried Farnon asked me to call. Oh, I see. Come in. Thank you. They cause. In many ways, they're a much maligned species. Do you think so? Well, they do seem fair game for every kind of cruelty and neglect, don't they?、Mm. I prefer cats to people myself. Oh yes. This is my husband, Alfred. Oh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Bond. That's Primetta. She was my first cat. Oh, very nice. One does wonder who she was, and who she is now. Pardon? Do you believe in reincarnation, Mr. Harriet? Well, it's not something that I know very much about, actually, Mrs. Bond. Alfred doesn't. Well, which one of these cats is it? Oh, it's none of these. These are the inside cats. It's one of the outside cats. Outside cats? They won't enter the house except for food. They're virtually wild. Oh, I see. And it's one of the outside cats that's sick, is it? Boris. Pardon? That's his name. I'm afraid he's a bit of a bully. He's the wildest of them all. Uh, he wouldn't, by any chance, have a torn ear, would he? Yes, actually.、Mm -hmm. I think we've already met. <laughs> he got it in a fight with an Alsatian. Really? I'd watch that one if I were you. The Alsatian lost. Yes. Boris, where are you? He's probably in the woodshed. Yes. Boris. Boris. Oh, Boris, come along. Oh yes, there he is. Ah, Boris! Come on, Boris! Push, 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 push! As he was a gladiator in a previous existence. Really? You 
you enjoyed that. Oh, you're being softy. Well, look. You nailed the blighter in the end then, James, did you? I'm afraid not, Siegfried, no. He took off into the woods and that was the last we saw of him. Well, I well, would just have to catch up with him later in the week, I suppose. Yes. Well, well, well. sufficient evil unto the day and all that. Yes, James. There we are. It is good as new. How much is it? Rabbits are free. Mm. And do you know rabbit bringers qualify for as many of these as they can have? Any pockets? Oh, I'm cool. Off you go then. Oh my, I'll see you later. on me, you know, the telltale signs. Telltale signs? Of tension between the two of you. I have no blind idea what you're talking I'll about. Would you, would you see? Takes a detached observer. I've no tiny things at the moment. Flash of irritation, a hurt look. But these things will grow, you know. From little acorns. And I'm far too fond of both of you to let it happen. Uh, the question is, uh, why did it happen? Huh? I wasn't aware that it was, or is, but I feel sure that you're going to tell us. It's because you're simply too close. You're living in each other's pockets up in a tiny little room now. So you want us to find alternative accommodation? Yes, I do. Just like that. So we can always go and live with Dad for a bit. Right! Not a very good idea living within laws and very inconvenient for night calls. He still has no telephones. What alternative do we have? Uh, uh, uh. Come with me. What do you think? It's a boy, but much more room than you've got at present. It's dusty, but it can be swept. Oh, dirty, but it can be painted. Try this. Oh. Not quite a charmed magic casement. Opening on the foam of perilous seas in fairy lands forlorn. <laughs> The possible view of the Dales. And uh, in here, uh, your own kitchen uh, dining room. Have us going there for a minute, didn't you? All done with the purpose, there, you see. I think what it's going to do to your thickening waistline, James, what? having to climb up three flights of stairs umpteen times a day. Well, I'll leave you, children. Let me know when you want to move your furniture in, and I'll make sure my little brother is completely available. <laughs> Does have a point. What? 
The extra room will come in welcome. Well, we'll need a wallpaper. Paint. <laughs> oh, can we afford it? Yes. I'll beard the bank manager. There will be a war, James. Well, Germany walking into Austria, so. Still, if there is, there is love. Not much the little people can do to stop it. <laughs> well, I'd better get a brush. Make a start. Fighting fire with fire. What? My brother's a bit like the moon, you know, has these phases. Yes. He He's in one of them now. Spends the entire day bursting into rooms unexpectedly, hoping to catch me swinging the lead. I just can't resist the challenge. But how's that going to help? This is my sea feed line. Oh, of course, yes, he would be. Where's Tristan? In the living room, I think. Looking for me, Siegfried? Um, do you know where Helen is? In the surgery, I think. I see. Come on. Beauty, Harry. What's me, Mr. Harriet? Went all the way up to Scotland to get him. Aye, and it cost me hundred quid. Every last penny I had. It's true, that's a lot of money to pay for a young calf, Harry. Dobson's choice, Mr. Harriet. I need him to improve the quality of me airships, and I've not the money to lay out on a big one. He's in first class shape, Harry. You've got yourself a bargain. Well, it's prize winners on both sides of his family. Right, and the fancy name to go with. Oh, yes? That's Newton Montmorency the Sixth. <laughs> Aye, well, little Monty for sure, is he? Hello. Is Mr. Elliot in, please? No, I'm sorry, he's not. One of the other vets help. It was Mr. Elliot I wanted to see. Oh, well, I'm not quite sure how long he's likely to be. I'll wait. I'm not in spy, then. Right. and manoeuvre. I should probably have been a general or something. The way things are going in Europe, you may get the chance. No, it won't be a war, Helen. Everyone has too much to lose. 
It would serve old Adolf right if there was there. Eh? It's so bloody his nose for Helen! No. It's in there. Oh, thanks. Oh, oh James, hmm? the customer for you. He's in the waiting room. Oh. You wouldn't see anybody else. Uh, you wouldn't put a couple of those in there for him, would you, please? Oh. Thanks. It's Mr. Dean, isn't it? Mr. Elliot. Oh, this must be, um, Bob. Bob, that's it. Hello, Bob. Well, what's the matter with him? Nothing with him. Oh? I were a pit man for years, Mr. Elliot. Cold face. It's the dust as gets you. That dust is a real killer. So you haven't been very well, then? <laughs> There's no wrong with me. A couple of new lungs and a fresh ticker wouldn't put right. No, oh, I'm not grumbling. I've had a good knock. It'll be right grand to see tell lass again. The only hit with this one I were worried about. I've no one else left now, do you see? I just want to make sure he goes to a good home. Somebody's going to take care of him. You're being a bit pessimistic, aren't you, Mr. Dean? You were the only one I could think of. Don't you worry about it, Mr. Dean. Thanks. Come on. Did you... Uh, did you ever smoke that cigar I once gave you, Mr. Elliot? It was the best smoke I ever had. Hi. <laughs> um... Uh... I've got something to show you. Come with me. Oh, look at that. Great. Sort of payment in kind, just sitting up old Fred's dog in the wallpaper shop. Do you like it? Mm. Oh, it's lovely. Mm. How's your wallpaper? Oh, it's not good. Well, to be honest, it's non-existent. Yours? Excellent. Oh, thank goodness for that. Uh, do you think we'll be enough? Oh, Thomas. Ah, uh, this is Mr. Farnham's residence. Well, they're all over in their dinners just now. Can I take a message? Hi. Mm. A cat. Uh, right. I'll tell him. That one, this is Bond on the phone. Oh, it's Miss Johnson. Someone about a cat. It still needs its ears stitching. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Thanks to Mrs. Old James. I thought you dealt with that days ago. Well, I've been meaning to see if I just haven't got round to it, that's all. Not intimidating, no, James, by mere cat. Of course not. What an idea. Great thing with creatures like that, of course, is to make it quite clear from the very beginning who is the boss. You can make absolutely certain who wins the first round. Then you never have any trouble. I never really have. Oh. You've met Boris, have you seen? No, James, I haven't, but I can't see what difference that makes. Well, he's not so much a large cat as a small puma. <laughs> Size has got absolutely nothing to do with it. It's simply a matter of imposing one's will on one of the lesser orders. Maybe you ought to go out and stitch here, Siegfried. Chess will hurt Stan. I wouldn't insult James by volunteering. Well, I wouldn't be insulted, Siegfried. Not one little bit. I do have rather a lot on today. And you did say you didn't have much on yourself. Well, it is a mere cat when all's said and done. Fifteen minutes of a job. Mm. Right. 
Nein, Frau Gemisch, Gott Land. Wait. Ich habe mir erklärt, wir haben sicher domestic best. You'll need these. Oh, I hardly think so. Well, suit yourself, but you saw what happened to Mr. Harriet. Oh, Mr. Harriet's an enormously good man, Mrs. Bond, but uh, as you and I know, cats are a law unto themselves, and of course, uh, experience does count. Uh, where is the animal from? This way. Wonderfully early spring. Oh. 